Okay, I think this is it. Yeah? Who's missing? It's Siri, Jess, um, Nicole's here, Robert, Tony, Kevin. Okay, good morning. It's Friday. Happy Friday. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Quick announcement. Some changes in next week. But first, Ms. Trisha just texted me before I started the class. She said hi to everyone and she misses you. She's going to be back April 21st, so four weeks instead of six weeks. Um, her her brother-in-law passed away last night and um, she's not flying back, flying to um, to pay respects because she did that while he was still alive. So she and her husband flew um, and visited him before she did her surgery. So that's one. And then speaking of death, Prince Philip died last night. You've heard. Okay, he's 99 though. You just had your vaccine like two months ago. One important announcement for you guys. We don't have labs on Monday. However, we do have labs at the campus on Wednesday the 14th. So we'll go out into announcements. Instead of a Monday, can everybody hear me? I want to see everybody. I want to see my view. Okay. Instead of Monday labs, we will go in the campus the 14th, 9 till 12. Okay. So this is still within class hours within class hours. So there should be no reason for you to not be there because instead of being in Zoom, we will be in the campus. But Monday we go live on Zoom. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so your work should not be affected. If you have to go to work straight, just bring your work clothes, okay? That's very common, students do that. Students in the morning who work in the afternoon bring their work clothes and then go straight to work. Students in the afternoon come from work in the morning and then bring their uniforms. So again, Monday is going to be live Zoom at 10 a.m. with me. That clear? Okay. And then Tuesday is still drug words and abbreviation test. Okay, week two, we still present today. Wednesday, in-campus lab from nine to 12. Okay, sophomores, you are welcome to stay so that I can teach you IV. Okay, we'll go on break 12 to one, but we can do IV one, two, three, if you want that. Okay, freshmen, you are welcome to observe if you have time, but I know at Siri works, Nicole works. You're only required nine to 12 on Wednesday to be at the campus. If you want extra time with me, you wanna get ahead, you got time, you wanna do IV with me, you're welcome to stay one to three with me. And you'll definitely be seeing me. <laughs> no, that's at the campus, okay. Thursday, you still do your audio lectures, okay? And then Friday, we do Zoom as well, okay? I'll have to end the class early on Friday though because I have a meeting with Ms. Trisha, Mr. Sesa, and the other, um, um, and probably Ms. Jaylene, okay? So again, let me be repetitive. Zoom on Monday. Oh, Eileen, hang on, let me repeat that once Eileen gets in, okay? So she doesn't miss it. Eileen, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I think she's still trying to log in. Eileen, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. I was just making announcements of some changes in her schedule. Um, Ms. Trisha will be back April 21st. 
um, she will be released by her doctor. So instead of six weeks to eight weeks healing time, she actually did it in four, going to do it in four. Ms. Trisha said hi to everyone. She misses everyone. Ms. Trisha's um, brother-in-law passed away last night. She's not going anywhere because they already visited. And then some changes in the schedule. I want to see you. Okay. Changes in schedule next week. Please take note. We are going to do live Zoom on Monday. Live Zoom on Monday. Tuesday is still drug words week to abbrevi and abbreviation week to test. Wednesday, though, you're required to be at the campus 9 to 12. Wednesday. So if you're going straight to work, just bring your work clothes. Is that clear? So we got to flip flop Monday and Wednesday. Wednesday is in campus lab 9 to 12. Okay. If you're off and you want to stay, I am going to work with the sophomores on IV from 1 to 3. Break 12 to 1 and then 1 to 3 IV. Okay. Thursday, you do your audio lectures. And then Friday, we still go Zoom. So we're just flip flopping Monday and Wednesday schedule. Okay. I told you the next two weeks will be a little bit erratic because um, of some changes in schedule in my work schedule and my son's testing schedule. I need to take him to his campus four times in the next two weeks. So for state testing, that's why the adjustments. And then I couldn't wait for Ms. Trisha to be back. She's going to be back the 21st. Um, final exam is going to be on the 20th. Final exam for pharmacy tech duties is going to be on the 20th, which means plan accordingly. Make sure you've listened to all audio lectures before the 20th or by the 20th. That clear? Okay. Today is only presentation in preparation for your Tuesday drug words and abbreviation test. Okay. We're going to do drug words week two today, and we're going to do abbreviation. Okay. Freshman, did you have any problems uploading your slides on Blackboard? No, Aziri, you're okay. Um, Jess, you're okay. Nicole, you okay? You did it. You were able to submit it without problems. Yeah, okay. So do you have any questions with the changes in schedule? I will send that as an announcement as well, okay? So that I can be so repetitive and you don't have an excuse. <laughs> you don't have a single excuse that I did not uh, make that clear, okay? I will send this announcement to Joey, Nyla, and Shauna as well, okay, for Wednesday. But feel free to text them if you want to, okay? So sophomores, we are on the dot. None of you have an incomplete in your portal, okay? All of you got letter and number grades, okay? Which means at this point, you are on time going out on externship, okay? Eileen, what I'd request from you is to start putting in more hours after 12 o'clock so that you can catch up on the other, um, on IV. Okay, most specifically on IV, okay, but because in the prescriptions, you've been doing the prescriptions already, okay? I have a uh, Monday and Fridays off from work. Oh, I wow, you got some offs? Okay, so Ms. Trish is coming back next week, okay, and we will see how the schedule will change. We will most likely open the labs all day. She will still be in a neck brace but she can do much lifting yet. So I think I'll have her, I'll see how she is, if she can do labs in campus or she'd prefer to be doing Zoom, okay? We'll see how she is. Cause I wanted, I know she's, I know the doctor will release her but I still want her to not push it too much, okay? Cause it's hard when she relapses, okay? Priority is health for everyone, okay. You guys ready? It's Friday? Okay. Who wants to go first? It doesn't have to be in order because when you're tested, it's not in order. Okay, so I really don't care who goes first. Any volunteers, any takers? I'll do my last three. Okay, because mine are mostly over the counter. In the past, when we assign drugs, they're prescriptions only. Eileen, you want to set an example since you're the senior? Okay, let me get my slide ready. Everybody can share their slides. No one um, is not able to share their slide. 
If you can't just email it to me, I'll project it for you. Uh, for other freshmen, what we usually do is take pictures with our phones so we can just listen and take down later the information on our, uh, on however we study the words, just a heads up. Very good, Tony, thanks for that tip. Um, if you're using a Mac, I use Command Shift 4. Okay, um, Bebe? Windows Shift S. For Windows, it's Windows Shift S to screenshot. Or if you want to take a screenshot of the entire screen, then just use Windows Print Screen. Windows Print Screen. There you go. Okay. I'm not used to Windows anymore. It was opposite before. I'm used to Windows, then I transitioned to Mac, and then he's now doing Windows. So he teaches me that again. Good job. Dr. Said sodium for Eileen. Okay, I forgot how to make it big. Uh, you press slideshow at the top, like in, in between. Yeah, right there. And then pr from the beginning. There you go. Okay, so I have Dr. Said sodium. Brand name is Colace. And it is used to relieve occasional constipation or irregularity. Uh, pharmacological class is surfactant, laxative, therapeutical class is stool softener, laxative, and DA is ARCs only and not a controlled. Pregnancy category is C, and for dosage forms, I have oral and rectal. And some important information is, oh, where did it go? What happened? They see it. What Just go it? back um, the lower left uh, arrow at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, and then import important information about this drug is you should not use docosate if you also use mineral oil unless your doctor tells you to, or do not give this medication to a child without medical advice. Use exactly as directed on the label or as prescribed by your doctor and drink plenty of fluids while you're on, when you are using docosate sodium. So these are samples. Uh, one is the stool softener and one is the pills, the tablet that you can use. So what, is, what I have, Ms. L. Okay, cool. So the brand name is Colace. Like what she said, the generic is docusate sodium. You have to remember that this is a what? This is used to relieve um, occasional constipation. It's a laxative, okay? It can be prescription, it can be OTC, and it's not controlled, okay? Um, the rectal is the suppository, correct, Eileen? Yes. And then the oral are your tablets. Is it in tablet form? Tablet. Tablet, yeah. tablet form, okay? Oh, so it's yeah. Right, yeah. What did you say? Oh, it's uh, soft gels. Soft gels, okay, yeah. soft gels mm -hmm. um, is what she said. And um, do not give this drug to a child without medical advice, okay? So pretty easy. Okay, you can just get this over the counter as well as a laxative if you have occasional constipation. Thank you. Next one. Here we go, sophomores, anyone? Go, Kevin. All righty. Uh, so my drug for this week was enalapril. All right. And uh, oh, first of all, can, can everyone see uh, the slide? All right. So this is a drug particularly for the cardiovascular system. Um, it is a hypertensive drug for therapeutic class. 
pharmacological class, it's uh, an ACE inhibitor or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. So it's specifically for like uh, your hypertension, people who have like the high blood pressure and whatnot. And as you can see uh, for the uses, uh, it is for the high blood pressure. And it could also be used in conjunction with other medications to help with congestive heart failure. Um, BA class, it's not a controlled substance, so it's RX only. So you're gonna have to need a prescription for it. Now, this is interesting. This is the drug I've seen where I was just like, okay, the pregnancy category is a little confusing, but, um, and it's different from other drugs I've done. So the category is C for the first trimester for when um, with the patient, if she's pregnant, right? However, it's categories D for the second and third trimester. So don't even try to use it because it, this drug will cause birth defects. Um, and, and I'm, you know, it's not, it's not good. So um, there's a couple of unique ways it can be administered. You have the injection solution, which is gonna be an IV. You have the tablets and then the different uh, strengths. And then you have a powder for oral solution, um, which is uh, pretty interesting because I haven't seen a drug like this either since I was like a kid, where you have to like take a scoop of one of the drug and then mix it with water and then you take it, which is interesting. Uh, common side effects, the biggest one was cough. Uh, next was followed by dizziness and then it can cause lower blood pressure. So um, definitely want to check your blood pressure when you take this medication. Um, and then some other miscellaneous information um, that I didn't uh, put onto the slide, but I have on my notes here. Um, some drugs will affect this and how it works as well, or it can um, affect your 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 um, your overall health. So before you take this medication, you want to also let the doctor know whoever's prescribing you um, Elanapril or Vasitec, um that you're taking, for example, lithium because it could affect you, a diuretic or a water pill. Um, and then NSAIDs can also uh, affect how this medication works. Um, some of the risk factors, uh, there could be uh, kidney problems. Uh, for, for people who have kidney problems, they can worsen it by taking this medication. And also people who have liver uh, disease, this can also worsen, worsen their liver and cause jaundice, which is like yellowing of the skin. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, um, let me add this or highlight a couple of things. The more popular brand name is Vasotec, okay? More than the Epinet, okay, Vasotec. So if you receive a prescription for Vasotec, the brand name, that means you're gonna have to fill it with an Alapril. Remember, um, in the United States, brand and generic prescriptions are accepted, okay? So if a prescriber writes a Vasotec, we actually dispense an Alapril, generic, because we usually prescribe, we usually dispense generic because one, that's what the insurance will pay for, will pay for, and two, usually they're cheaper when they're generic, okay? Price-wise, that's why, that's why, that's, oh my God, I can't talk today. That's why that's, I got to get off of my chair. You know how my blood is not circulating when I'm sitting down. Okay, so that's why that's what the insurance will pay for because the generic is usually cheaper. Again, more popular brand is your Vasotec. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Okay, on your drug cheat sheets, the top 200 um, ebook that I gave you, top 200 drugs, one of the cheat codes that I had in there was Pril. Okay, remember this cheat codes are applicable for generic names. Can you, can you hear me? Okay, I specifically said in that ebook that, that this cheat codes work for generic names only. Okay, and for this one, it's enalapril. If you look on that book, it'll say pril. And prils are ACE inhibitors, okay? ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme and then inhibitor. Let me explain that. We are to break down the words and make it simple. Angio, angio means heart. Tensin means tension. 
So pressure, right? Okay. Converting enzyme. Enzymes are the ones that speed the rate of reaction. Okay. Angiotensin converting enzyme. Okay. We have, we're going to think of it more, uh, more uh, simpler terms, more layman. It's going to be something that puts pressure in the heart, an enzyme that puts pressure in the heart. Okay. Right. But this drug is an inhibitor of that enzyme. You, you understand? Okay. That's why the result is to lower the blood pressure. So this drug is used for hypertension or it's called an antihypertensin. Other drugs used for hypertension, let me give you another example that's on your cheat code. Olol. Olol, the suffix olol are beta blockers. Okay, it's also an antihypertensive. Okay, so now you really don't have to memorize the top 200 drugs if you know this cheat codes. You see how, especially when you're a freshman, oh my God, she gave us too much, right? When do I use what and how? How do I use it? What is this for? So I'm telling you now that the top 200 cheat codes or ebook that I gave you is for your top 200 or for your drugs so that you don't memorize, actually memorize the drugs, okay? You actually remember them because you understand what they are for, what they do to your body. That's why we go over this, okay? One by one. So now it starts clicking, oh, that's what the ebook is for. Yeah, it helps us remember. Okay, who has browsed the ebook? Jazz at Siri Nicole. Be honest, that's fine. Nicole, yeah? Okay, at Siri and Jess. Now you know that when Kevin presented Prill, I said Prill, the generic, part of the generic, the suffix, which is the N syllable, Prill. It tells you right away it's an ACE inhibitor. And when it's an ACE inhibitor, it's used to lower blood pressure. Get it? So don't just disregard the references I give you. There's a reason why I give you that. You know, I have more, but I don't give it to you right away. I give it as you need it, okay? As you'll need it. The reason I gave you access to that dosage calculation um, class is because you're going to be doing day supply and quantity to be dispensed, okay? You're going to be doing day supply and quantity to be dispensed in the campus. And I hope you went to that, okay? It can be overwhelming, but I tell you exactly when to use it and how to use it, okay? But there's a lot, okay? So you cannot say that we left you empty-handed. There's always a lot that, uh, a lot of references that you can use. It just gets overwhelming because you don't know when you actually have to use it until um, you've figured, oh my gosh, that's where it, that's where he got it from, okay? So, Simple, ACE inhibitor, okay, ends in pril for hypertension, okay? Do not um, take advantage, okay? Actually, take advantage of that top 200 drugs ebook with the cheat codes, because this is one, okay? Pril, ACE inhibitor for hypertension, okay? Now you're not memorizing the drugs. You really are understanding them, and there are clues. Okay, next one. Thanks, Kevin. Interesting category, okay? It's just D on my end. However, that's really good. Kevin is really good at researching like details like this. He said first trimester, category C, and then it becomes category D. Bottom line, do not give it to pregnant women because it may cause um, birth defects, okay? Tony, you ready? Tony, we can't hear you yet. 
Perfect. Can you guys hear me? Okay, perfect. Um, mine is Hytrin, generic terazosin. Uh, it's prescription only, Rx. Uh, the therapeutic class is, is an, anti <clears throat> it's an antihypertensive. The pharmacological class is the alpha blockers. Pregnancy class is C. It's used to treat uh, enlarged prostate or uh, benign prostate hyperplasia. That would be the, the name for it. And, uh, and hypertension, of course. And some common side effects are weakness, dizziness, and drowsiness. You have additional info, Tony? I do not. Okay, so take note. So this is for hypertension as well. It's an alpha blocker, okay? It's different from a beta blocker. I'll discuss beta blocker once we get to one, okay? Hytrin is a popular brand name, but it is also used for, take note, hint, hint, wink, wink, abbreviation, BPH. BPH stands for benign prostatic hyperplasia. Benign prostatic hyper Plasia, okay? So, but primarily it's an anti-hypertensive. Um, Zosin is not really a common suffix, okay? But it is an alpha blocker. Any uh, add-on, Tony? Nothing? Like warnings, prostatic, like prostate, but take out the E and then add IC. Prostatic, P-R-O-S-T-A-T-I-C, benign, prostatic, like prostate, prostate, T-I-C. There you go, perfect, hyperplasia, BPH, okay? That's your enlarged prostate. Okay, cool. Anyone with additional information on Hytrin that you may want to add? since Tony doesn't have extra. Uh, I sort of took cues from your last slides. That's why I didn't add more. I was like, oh, maybe she just wants it cleaner and cut down. That was my fault. Yeah, yeah, um, for the slide, yeah, because it's gonna be heavy if you have more than one slide when you upload it on Blackboard. Oh, okay. okay. That's why Kevin had his notes on the side and Eileen had, his, had her notes on the side and they're just mentioning. Oh, that was my mistake then, I apologize. That's okay. Um, anyway Eileen, Kevin, you have any add-on info for Hytrin? It says here, uh, Hytrin can affect your pupils during cataract surgery. You may um, wish to I'll... take this medication only at bedtime if it causes you to feel lightheaded. And be careful if you drive or do anything that requires you to be alert. Avoid standing for prolonged periods of time or becoming overheated during exercise and in hot weather. Very good. That's an important note because once you see that one of the common side effects, effects, E-F-F-E-C-T-S, one of the common side effects is drowsiness, okay? We always have a warning to not drive do not operate heavy machinery, which includes your car or vehicle that you drive. And then we usually advise that it be taken at night because it helps with sleep. Okay. Tony, you're raising your hand. And then um, Kevin. I found uh, something else. It says, if you, what is it saying? It says, if you miss taking uh, terasozin for a few days, you may need to restart treatment at a low dosage and gradually increase your dosage again. Yeah. And consult your doctor for more details. Yeah, because um, I'm not going to explain it right now. I'm going to explain it in pharmacology, like the blood concentration level of the drug after not taking it would drop. So you have to start from the beginning. Kevin, you wanted to add something. I saw you. Um, it was just uh, one of the rare side effects, but it happens most, and this is for males. Um, it, can ca it can cause an erection that lasted more than four hours and it's painful. So if that happens, you got to let your doctor know right away. 
Um, and in addition to that, it can also cause uh, constipation and possibly even gout. Yeah. Similar warning as Viagra, call your doctor after a certain number of hours of um, having an erection. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Robert, you next. Yeah. <clears throat> It's funny, I'm like a security guard. I look at all these cameras and then a camera for the front door. <laughs> I'm like head of security. What's your job? I'm head of the security of the household. <laughs> okay, so I have Haldol. The generic is Haloperidol. And the therapeutic class is antipsychotics. And so is the pharmacological class. It's a first generation antipsychotic. Uh, pregnancy category is C. DEA class is uh, RX only. Uh, some adverse effects that can happen when you're taking this, you can get erect, uh, weight gain, erectile dysfunction, and muscle stiffness. The dosages comes in tablets, and it comes in like 0.5 milligrams, 1, 2, 5, 10, and 20 milligrams. It's used to treat schizophrenia. It rebalances dopamine to improve thinking and behavior. And some extra info, avoid using for elderly patients with dementia and psychosis. Uh, it may cause central nervous system depression, which impairs physical or mental abilities. It may decrease effectiveness of amphetamines and anti-Parkinson agents and it should be stored in 20 to 25 degrees Celsius and be protected from light. Okay. Once you get to the audio lectures on nervous system, I have a story about this and I'm not gonna tell the story right now. It's about um, me dispensing drugs to psych patients, okay? Um, I was talking about uh, back in the Philippines, hospitals, the basements are psychiatric wards. Okay, basements are psychiatric wards. So when we tease each other, did you just get released from the basement? <laughs> when somebody's acting crazy, we tell that to each other. Did you just get released from the basement? Because the hospital's basements are usually the psychiatric ward. And I told um, in that in that audio lecture, I told a story about my experience in the psychiatric ward, not as a patient. <laughs> But as a pharmacist going into the psychiatric ward, um, delivering drugs, okay? Um, here we have specialty hospitals, okay? Psychiatric hospitals, okay? Did you ever see, this was interesting to me, okay? We have Raw Nielsen, which is, um, Ross and Neal, I think, which is behind CSN. If you saw that, that's a psychiatric um, small hospital. Okay, they've reached out to me in the past at CSN wanting our students for externship and then they reached out to me for Pima wanting um, our students to go there for externship. The problem is with Ross and Neil, the one behind CSN, it's a hospital but they don't do IV. It's a hospital but they don't do IV. So it really doesn't satisfy a requirement for students to be in there counted as a hospital. We may actually put them in there, but it's not gonna count as a hospital, okay? So when I was um, going to do my site visit, <laughs> I texted my friend, I said, I'm going in a psychiatric ward, a psychiatric hospital. If you don't hear from me after two hours, <laughs> Maybe start calling my family. No, I was just joking. But anyway, so that Ross and Neil doesn't have IV. Okay, it's just um, spending. Usually, it's family members who call. Okay, that hospital to take whoever family member is having issues. Okay, I joke about this. I always tell you have a little black book where you can, I'll tell you, especially you guys are young, you're in the dating scene. I'll tell you the drugs that you should not see in the medicine cabinet of the woman or the man you're dating. And this is one of them. <laughs> Remember I told you find a way, <laughs> find a way 
to get to the medicine cabinet. Use the restroom. I'm giving you a smart advice, huh? Okay, find a way to use the restroom, get to the medicine cabinet. Well, I didn't teach you this, okay? But if this is one of the drugs that's in there, you might wanna block that number. <laughs> No more second dates. <laughs> this is one of them. Okay. I told you the story about um, in the nervous system audio lectures. I told the story about my professor and his wife being in a psychiatric ward. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you that right now, but this is one of the drugs I first handled. That's for, um, um, that's as a pharmacist, as a new pharmacist. Okay. And yeah, it was delivered at the basement. And this, as mentioned by Robert, this is an antipsychotic. Okay. But what's weird is look, this is an antipsychotic, but you should not give it to elderly patients with psychosis. You see that? Not for elderly. Okay. It causes CNS depression. It's primarily used for schizophrenia. And what is schizophrenia? Brand name is Haldol, generic is haloperidol. What's schizophrenia? In layman's term, can you describe schizophrenia, Kevin? Basically, like you hear and see things that there aren't actually there. And you kind of like talk to yourself. You're very like paranoid in, in a sense. Right. Like with okay. the world. Very good. Who has seen a beautiful mind? Oh, okay. So if we're in the campus, I usually have movie nights or movie days okay this is a two-hour movie i'd like you to see it okay a beautiful mind by russell crow it's a true russell it's a true story okay of a professor with schizophrenia okay it might be on netflix okay a beautiful mind okay it's a very very good movie it's two hours back when we were in the campus i'd have a movie night Okay. I let students bring popcorn and soda and we'd watch this for two hours once we do nervous system. Okay, I do stuff like that. We do stuff like that. But right now, I don't have the luxury of two hours. Yeah. Okay, so I want you to look for that. A beautiful mind. It's schizophrenia. Okay. And they did specifically mention the drugs, but it will actually show you like the side effects, which is erectile dysfunction. Okay, the reason why he stopped taking the drug because he was having a hard time with on that side with his wife and he wanted to make love with his wife, but having this and the side effect of erectile dysfunction adds on to the stress. Okay, so I want you to watch it. It's such a beautiful movie and it's based off of a true story. The professor is a Nobel Prize winner. Okay, and um, he recently died like no more than five years in real life, okay? Ms. Jaylene sent a message about um, a couple of stories delivering meds to um, um, psychiatric wards. I wanna hear at least one story, but before you do that, speaking of the word behavior, Tony, um, Robert, behavior with a U is English, not American English, but British English spelling. <laughs> So behavior for us, American B-E-H-A-V-I-O-R, no you, okay? Just like practice, T-I-S-E is British English, T-I-C-E for us, American English, okay? We use American English on tests, just so you know, okay? So I don't know what your reference is for this one. Ms. Jaylin, can you tell us one story for um, delivering meds in psychiatric ward or she's very nice, politically correct, behavior health ward <laughs> oh, yeah we called it the behavior health ward at one of the hospitals i worked with I worked yeah very with. politically correct okay so can you tell us at least one story yeah so i remember this one time the unit was being uh, renovated and so in our hospital we had two separate behavior health um, it was in the same unit but two separate sides so one side was you know patients to um okay one side was for patients who um, were at risk of harming themselves or harming others. And one side was for, you know, regular patients who don't, you know, don't, wouldn't harm other people. So anyway, it was being renovated. And during this time of renovation, 
the pharmacy pharmacy staff had to go around. They had to go inside the closed area with the harmful patients. And we had to be escorted, of course. We weren't just, um, you know, just, okay, go, you can go. Well, anyway, there's this uh, regular patient. She always came in. And I remember walking by her room and she was being held down and she was banging on the walls. Get me the F out of here. She said, she said the word get me the F out of here. It was so scary. It was, it was, it was scary. And those are the kinds of things that you're going to experience in behavior health units. Um, but you know, I just did my thing. Just, I didn't look at her, just, you know, focus, had my blinders on my horse blinders and just went to the med room and just did my thing and went out there. But yeah, I'm going to tell this other one too. One time I went in there and then there's, um, Next to the entrance was like this, um, you know, this, this, this outdoor area that patients can just go outside and it was locked. So they couldn't get out through that area, but there was a big window. And then in the window, I was just doing my thing, going to the med room. And then I saw the patient's butt. I saw his butt and he was the only, he was the only one out there. And so I was like, I, your patient's naked over there. I saw his butt. <laughs> And then they looked at the camera and they're like, oh my gosh. And then they went to go, you know, put his clothes on or whatever. But it's just that you never know. You never, you know, you, never, you don't know what's going to happen when you go into those units. Did he or she actually intentionally show his or her butt? Um, I think, I, I, I don't think it was intentional. I don't think that they did it, you know, so people could see their butt. But, I think, you know, something was going on maybe something was going on but it wasn't intentional no <laughs> maybe he just felt comfortable and wanted to be naked I don't know but anyway you just don't know what to expect and those are nice uh, stories I like to share it is very interesting to deliver meds at wards like that and I've seen like those like running naked um a couple couple holding hands but they're not really a couple but it's i think love stories get developed in psychiatric wards too i don't know but um during my time hipaa wasn't in place yet okay so we would have we would admit celebrities in the psychiatric ward okay and usually when we admit celebrities not really because they're crazy crazy it's usually because of addiction, drug addiction, okay? Drug addiction, because we didn't have a lot of rehabs at that time. And of course, um, if you're addicted to a substance, it gets to, and, and it's too much, then um, you act, what is the term, Ms. Jaylene? You can be placed in a behavior health ward, <laughs> as she said, okay. Fun fact, you might not know, at the outlet mall, the one in the north, okay, you've seen this nice architectural um, structure, a really nice, crazy building. When that was being built, I thought that was a museum, yeah, or an art gallery, okay. Fun fact, it is a specialty um, psychiatric hospital. Yes. See, you live in town and you didn't even know, but it's no surprise that you didn't know because when I was there, I was like, wow, this is such a beautiful structure. It's like so crazy, right? Genius. Okay. But I found out after it was built that it, it is a psychiatric hospital, a specialty hospital. Really cool, right? Amazing minds for uh, for those um, patients with amazing minds as well. So so yeah. Anyway, so going back, how how hello paradol for schizophrenia, one of the drugs that we give for schizophrenic patients, and it rebalances dopamine, the mood, and behavior. Okay, so that's one. Um, I cannot say that this is a common suffix. It's just how the hello paradol. Okay. Next one. So I'm done with the sophomores. Here you go, freshman. It's your turn. Who wants to go? Nicole is going first. Let's do it. Let's hear it from you. I want to check 
that everybody can actually um, share their screen. And you, you guys said that no one's using their phones for Zoom anyway. So everyone should have the capability to share their screen. Good job. Nice. So you lose your camera, Nicole, when you present. I'm just letting you know, you lost your camera. That's okay. You have your screen, okay? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let, let me, it's gonna stay like this. Okay, we got it. Uh, my drug is Ender. The generic is isosorbide mononitrate. Uh, the very, therapy. Very close. Isosorbide mononitrate. I was close. Okay. Okay. Therapeutic class, nitrates. Uh, the pharmacology class is anti anginal agent and then vasodilator. The pregnancy category is B. And then the DEA class is RX. Um, the side effects would be headaches, dizziness, lightheadedness, and nausea. Uh, the use is to prevent chest pains that uh, caused by uh, coronary artery disease, also known as heart disease. And then info, it relaxes and widens the blood vessels so that the blood can flow easily. Um, it's not recommended to use during pregnancy, really. Uh, they're still like looking at it right now, but the medication used for heart is used for heart related chest pain, heart failure, and esophageal spasms. Ender will not treat an angina attack that has already begun. Okay, a couple of things. It is nice to have a picture of the drug, just like what you had. It's just hard to see, okay? Imdur is a brand name, a popular brand name for isosorbide mononitrate. Usually when you hear the nitrate as part of the generic name, it's a nitrates. And nitrates are used, you see how I'm connecting this now, huh? Listen, and nitrates are used for angina, okay? Nitrates are used for angina. And angina is what? Chest pain, okay? Chest pain that is alarming because it may lead to stroke or heart attack, okay? Um, another terminology I'd like to highlight, vasodilator. When you say vaso, blood vessels, blood vessels. Dilator, it dilates the blood vessels. What happens when blood vessels are constricted? Okay, and you imagine a hose, okay, with a kink. A hose, a garden hose with a kink. What happens? Like blood flow is bad, right? Or the water couldn't flow. So what happens? Pressure increases, okay? It sometimes bursts on the faucet side or leaks on the faucet side because of the pressure, right? Okay, so imagine that in your body, okay? Vaso means blood vessels. It's dilated, okay? So what do these drugs do, okay? I mean, it, I mean, when there's a kink, it's constricted, okay? So when you have problems in your heart, there's constriction of the blood vessels, okay? And imagine um, a garden hose that has a kink, there's constriction, okay? So the pressure goes up, okay? A vasodilator like nitrates, okay? Dilates the blood vessels, okay? So, or enlarges or dilates the blood vessels. And once the blood vessels dilate, circulation gets better, the pressure goes down. Just like in a garden hose, when you take that kink off, okay, the flow will be better, will be normal, okay, and the pressure goes down. So that's what it does, okay? So anti-anginal agent and a vasodilator. Nitrates in general, you have to remember this. When you hear nitrate on the generic name, nitrates are for angina, okay? And they're vasodilators. I have a question for you, Nicole. Is this sublingual? Is this sublingual? I did not look for that. Anyone? Okay, she mentioned this, an important note. This is not gonna stop the what? The attack. So this is preventive. 
Okay? When angina starts to happen, you don't just use this to stop the attack because the attack is already happening. Okay, so can somebody help me? Is this a sublingual tablet? No. No, you just swallow it. You just swallow it, okay? What's gonna be sublingual? Nitrolingual. Nitroglycerin is sublingual. Because that's the one that you use when an attack is happening, okay? NTG, okay? Place under the tongue, effect happens within 12 minutes. How many can you take? Three, what intervals? Hint, hint, wink, wink, PTCE. Nitroglycerin, I'm talking nitroglycerin right now, not MDUR. You can take it a maximum of three times. 15 minutes interval, okay? And after the third time, the chest pain doesn't go away, you call 911. Nitroglycerin is one of the uh, most common questions or favorite drug on the PTCE. Okay, so sublingual takes effect within 12 minutes. Okay, another important information about nitroglycerin, we place it in an amber colored bottle, which is the original manufacturer bottle, that brown bottle, because it needs to be protected from air, light, and temperature. Okay, another important information, this all comes up usually on the PTCE, okay. We usually put a cotton ball in it, but now we have those adsorbent pouches, those little pouches, okay. Another important information, it's a brand new prescription every six months, okay? So after six months, it has to be discarded because we believe that that has been affected by air, light, and temperature after six months, okay? So if a patient is on a nitroglycerin prescription, and the patient only touched one or two because of an anginal attack, the patient has to discard that, even if it's still an almost full bottle. You have to remember that, must be discarded after six months, okay? Amber colored bottle, okay? With a cotton ball or an adsorbent in it, okay? Discard after six months, do not put in the bathroom, must be protected from air, light, and temperature, okay? Very, very tiny, sublingual. Nitroglycerin also comes in a patch form, not only sublingual, okay? In a patch form. Also ointment, was oh, it ointment or cream? Ms. Jaylene, nitroglycerin. Ms. L, don't they have the spray also? The spray, yeah. The spray, they also have the spray, okay. That's the difference, okay, for Imdur, Okay, so nitroglycerin is also a nitrate, okay? But it's used during an attack. Imdur is not. Clear? Yeah, okay. Next one, thank you, Nicole. You guys did great. Jazz, you ready? No matter what, we're all gonna go. <laughs> I even have three. After the presentation of drugs, we'll go on break, a quick one, and then we'll do abbreviation because we're over one hour now. I said 50 minutes and then 10 minute break, but it's hard to do when we're presenting. Just a quick one, like a 15 minute. Okay. Ms. Jagan said nitroglycerin comes in ointment form, not a cream. Take note of our schedule, changes in schedule. I announced it. I typed it in the chat box. I'm gonna put it in the announcement later, okay? So just a little bit of a um, change. We'll flip flop Monday and Wednesday.
You need help, Jess? Click that green share screen tab at the bottom of your Zoom. Yeah. And then your, your slide must be open already for you to be able to find it. Um, yeah, it's open. Okay, then find that and then share that slide. Ms. Jaylene, I'll send you the Zoom invite for April 16th, Friday, 2 p.m. team meeting. I'd like you to join, yeah? So you can meet Sunny and Trisha. Um, I have to go into my preferences to do it. So I think it's not being able to share. Um, the control for preferences for sharing is on my end. So I allowed anybody to share screen. I don't think you need to change any of your preferences because I'm the host. So I have control whether I allow you to share or not share. I have control whether to allow you to have camera or not camera and use mic or not use mic. When you click the share screen, the green one at the bottom, what do you see? You should see different windows. Um, I see like desktop, Microsoft PowerPoint. There you go. Did you, did you make it in PowerPoint? Yeah, and then when I click, it says allow Zoom to share your screen, open system preferences, security oh. and privacy to grant access. Oh, you, you, yeah, you might have to adjust your preference. Is it okay if I jump to Xeri? And then what I'd like you to do is to email me your PowerPoint just as a backup. Okay, you know my email address? Okay, email me your PowerPoint just as a backup. Xeri, can you try yours? Perfect, good job. Okay, so I got um, fluticasone. Um, the brand is Flovent Discus. Um, there's actually three different um, brands, the Flovent HFA and the Armand Air Digihaler. Um, its usage, usage is for asthma, nasal congestion. Um, pharmacological is an inhaled glu glucorticoid. Uh, therapeutic is corticosteroids um, that blocks the release of natural substance that cause the allergy symptoms. Um, some side effects are some nasal discharge, headaches, um, and nasal dryness. Um, the pregnancy class, I really couldn't find like the letters, but it just said that um, there hasn't been any studies that has shown that women have effects from it, but it should be monitored if they have um, asthma and stuff, and it can be transported into the breast milk. So they need to talk to their doctor about that. And the DEA class, it's um, not controlled, so it can be over the counter or prescriptions. And um, it's funny, I actually got prescribed one of them. <laughs> one time I was sick, I was really congested. And um, this is what like the box looks like. And then this is what the bottle looks like. That's a generic. Yeah, you can yeah, have it. It's generic, and then you just like shake it and like you like spray like up your nostril. Very yeah. good. Okay. Is that it? You, you want to add more? Um, that's all that I had. Okay. So same with my son. He has really bad allergies um, when he was two growing up. He's kind of outgrown it. Okay, um, I actually gave him probiotics. The moment I started giving him probiotics, allergies are very controllable. But anyway, when he was younger, he was prescribed Montelukast, which is the pink square chewable tablet that's usually given. Tony's not, you have little brothers and sisters? Yeah. Or you no, no, not me, but I believe my either my mom or sister are taking that. I don't know the name. It's, as soon as you said it, I knew that name. Okay, so it's that pink pill 
square chewable that's usually prescribed to kids, okay? Montelucas, the brand name is Singular, okay? You're probably wondering, oh, you know why? It's for asthma, why are they prescribing that to kids, okay? Kids with really bad allergies to prevent it from developing into asthma, because asthma can be brought about by allergies, okay? My son's prescribed that together with Flonase, okay? Fluticasone, fluticasone right there, okay? Remember this, sone, suffix, S-O-N-E, corticosteroid, S-O-N-E, sone, so steroid, corticosteroid. And what do steroids do? Anti-inflammatory, okay? So I had to hand him the chewable tablet and he takes that and I had to spray him two sprays in each nostril for this. With you at Siri, you said you you had very bad congestion. That's why yeah. you were given this. Yeah, but do you have history of asthma? No, but I did. I do get allergies, um, like in the changes, like the season. So that it was like a couple of weeks ago, actually, before we started class, that I was really like congested. I had like a cough, like a runny nose. So I went to my doctor, and you know he prescribed me that. It stinks. Yeah. And my son had to do that, I think, for supposedly a year to two years, but I stopped it, okay? Yeah, but I, I did it, like, once, and then I didn't do it again. One of the common side effects of steroids in general is stunted growth, okay? But if you check, that's why those people and steroids are kind of on the short side, especially when they have that or earlier, but this, the clinical trials on this one showed very, very little side effect of stunted growth. So anyway, um, going back just as a general info, okay? Steroids are anti-inflammatory. One of the side effects is stunted growth. That's why a lot of parents, when they hear that this is a steroid, you're gonna say, no, no, I don't want my son to, to not grow, okay? But the clinical trials prove that it's very, very little for this one. Anyway, it's used for asthma, uh, it's used for allergies, okay, um, together with usually Montelukas as asthma preventive, okay? Montelukas is singular. I saw you guys nodding because I think every single, every single child in Las Vegas was given a prescription of singular or Montelukas in their life. Robert, did you have singular or little brothers and sisters? Uh. I think I took something. I just remember taking a pink pill and chewing yeah, it. Yeah, chewable wall square. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So usually for allergies, but if you read the monograph, the product insert, it says it's for asthma. And remember, severe forms of allergies may lead to asthma. So it's it's really cool that you have that actually in hand at Siri and you have that um, with you. It was recalled. A certain lot number was recalled, I remember, four years ago because what it said on the letter that was sent to me was, okay, check this lot number if you have this. I think I still have a bottle in my under my sink um, because I stopped giving that to him. There's a specific lot number that had glass shards, broken glass shards, okay? Which, can you imagine that? You spray that in the nostril of the kids and it has broken glass shards, but it was for that particular lot number. So the moment I got that, remember guys, we did recalls, sequence one, law and ethics. The moment I got that letter, I went to the, um, I went where the drug was. I checked and matched the lot number if it's the same exact lot number as the one that's written on the letter, okay? And if it was, I should take it to the pharmacy or discard it, follow the instruction, but it wasn't, okay? So it wasn't part of that lot number. And that's how we do recalls. And we discuss that sequence one, okay? Good job, everyone. Um, Jess, you ready? Can you try or you emailed me? You think you fixed your setting? Oh, nice. That's Very your cool desktop, though. Oh, by the way, out of topic, Van Gogh Interactive. <laughs> Did you see that? Is that good? Have you been there? 
No, it's in July, so I want to do that before I leave the country. <laughs> yeah, at least she's starting night. That's if not if no other picture painting that one. Yeah, um, I want to do that Van Gogh interactive and um, the mods. Did you see that? It's at the Venetian. Miss Jaylee, you have a lot to see when you get here. <laughs> I know, I'm so excited. I know. So Mods is Museum of something, Discovery Space, something like that. But it's only five rooms. It's at the Venetian. Um, some say it's not worth it. I was reading the reviews, but I thought it was a cool uh, museum. Just five rooms. I remembered Van Gogh because what I see, Jess, I don't know if you see, we're only seeing a painting or your desktop. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, oh, is that why you guys are talking about that? I'm just like, what are they talking about? Okay, hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said Van Gogh, because I can see a painting. So I think you chose the wrong window. See what happens during live? <laughs> it's pretty though, but I think you chose the wrong one. So you have to open your slide and choose the slide. Yeah, very nice in the sort of monotone colors we've been seeing from other slides. It's a good yeah. break. Right. I did see your PowerPoint in my email too, so. And stop share and then do it again. Because we can see your desktop, that's it. I think that's your, how do you call that, wallpaper? Jess, you got to take it down, hmm? unshare, I don't know how you say it. Um, I have to take down what? What we're seeing is your desktop. So you got to yeah. take that down and then click share screen again. Okay. Stop screen share, there you go. Okay. And then click share screen again. Oh, it's just showing your desktop again. Um, hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Click share screen and then you should have options of windows. And if your PowerPoint, if your slide is open, choose that one and it should project it to us. Mm. Yeah, it's still telling me the whole privacy thing. I thought I had changed it, but now it's just showing me like my desktop, but it is open. Okay, so here's what you do. Email it to me now and I'll, I'll help you share the screen and then maybe figure that out later. So yeah. they don't blame you for not having a break. <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys can go on break while I figure this out. <laughs> no, just joking. I'm just teasing um, everyone. <laughs> I don't have um, Joey anymore to be my punching bag. So it's Tony now. I mean, what did I do? <laughs> you know, I always have a punching bag, yeah? Tony, it's because your name ends with a Y. Uh, Joey, it's so close. That's what it is. <laughs> you see how fun this class is? It's like when I start something, it just doesn't end. Bantering. How would you not like to be in this class, right? <laughs> Why would you quit this program? 
Yeah. Um, I sent an email. I'm not sure if you got it though. Okay. Make sure you attached it. I'm refreshing right now. I don't see it. Um, it could be under a different email. Oh. But I the subject should say fexofenity. Let's wait a few. Still not coming in. Did you check? I put my email address in the chat box. Yeah, I'll send it again. See, anything can happen during live. I got an announcement while you're work while you're waiting. I just got an email. We are looking for students who may be interested in working as a work study. Okay, there is a GPA requirement for this one, I, but it's low. It's not really high. Um, to do, to man the triage station, like checking the. Um, I don't know how much per hour, but it's above. Above, above minimum. <laughs> okay. So we are searching for stu students who may be interested in working as a work study. Okay. Any student who are interested or any students who are interested or want details, um, you can email Ms. Johnson. This is the email address and let them know that you're interested to be a work study. So if you're looking for a job, this is um, an option. Yeah, so the job basically is to man the triage station because those two students are going on externship. So you just check the temperature, check in people, check in students, check in staff, okay? But our security is tight. There's only a list of people that are allowed to come in and out of the campus. That's why I send that spreadsheet to the campus because if you're not there, you're not gonna be allowed, okay? Even the guests, I had to put Ms. Jalen in there when she visited the campus, okay? I still haven't gotten it. Okay. Okay, let me present mine first while I wait for you. I have three more, okay? I have three to present, okay. Can you see? Can you guys see? Well, it's just figuring it out and while I'm waiting for that PowerPoint. Sometimes if there, there's an attachment, it takes a while for the email to come in because of our security. Um, can you see mine? Okay, Benadryl. Benadryl is one of my favorite drugs. I'm actually not on Benadryl the last, oh, Kevin said me too. It's our best friend, right? Okay, primarily Benadryl, when it was created, it's, an, it's for allergies as well, antihistamine. That's why you'll notice if I am to categorize the allergy drugs, it falls under respiratory more than the immune system, but it's both, okay? So diphenhydramine, wrong spelling, DI. Okay. Brand name is Benadryl. Generic is diphenhydramine. Okay. So take note when you see I N E, we don't pronounce it as uh, Americans usually pronounce it ein. We pronounce it when it comes to drugs in diphenhydramine, antihistamine. Okay. So diphenhydramine is the generic, primarily an antihistamine. However, it's being used as a sleep aid because of its side effect. What's the side effect? Drowsiness and sleepiness. So instead of prescribing controlled substance, okay, or tranquilizers, okay, I love these prescribers or doctors who prescribe antihistamine first. And Benadryl of all the antihistamines, as one of the highest drowsy effect, okay? So I really don't believe in non-drowsy because all antihistamines have that drowsy effect, okay? And if you're using some non-drowsy, yeah, but there will still be some, a little bit of drowsy effect, okay? But know that Benadryl is an antihistamine primarily, okay? Um, it's, it's usually a marketing call a marketing strategy. So when Johnson & Johnson created Benadryl, 
okay? They have the original patent for diphenhydramine, okay? Remember, patents are good for 20 years. In the past, it's 17 years. And then it, they can extend it for up to five years, okay? But right now, when you're asked on the PTCE, in hint, wink, wink, how long are patents good for? The answer is 20 years, okay? It comes up on the board, okay? So when Johnson & Johnson is getting near to um, having their patents expire, they started marketing it as a sleep aid. And then when the patents expire, other pharmaceutical companies can create a generic equivalent to it, okay? And they marketed it as a sleep aid. So when it was marketed as an antihistamine, sales up, 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 up. But can you imagine 17 or 22 years later, of course, the sales will go down because there will be competition. So marketing strategy wise, luckily I was part of big companies, multinational companies. That's why I'm able to share this to you guys. When the sales go down, what did they do? Smart, the side effect, because people are using it to sleep, it helps them sleep. They marketed it for their side effect, okay? And now diphenhydramin, us, are using it for sleep, okay? Help, or sleep aid, okay? That's one. So it's an antihistamine. However, Benadryl is only, the effect only takes four to six hours. We use it at bedtime. So it's not your 24-hour allergy relief, okay? And it varies from person to person. Like me, it's a hit or miss for me if I'm using it for sleep, but it helps with allergies for me, food allergies. Um, it helps me at night with my allergies, okay? This is not your 24-hour allergy. And in the daytime, if it really has a, an effect of drowsiness on you, you don't want to use this if you're working or you're going to drive, okay? I remember my son used to have a nanny and I'd give her one tablet, okay? But she prefers not to have it when she's just having having a hard time sleeping because she said that one tablet makes her groggy 24 hours the next day because she's not used to it, okay? But I can take two tablets every night and it won't let me sleep still. I'd still be up at five in the morning even if I take two tablets. And then I got to get up at 6.30 or 7.30. <laughs> yeah? So two tablets don't even work for me, but it helps with my allergies. So each person is different, okay? Next one, what do I have? Why fenison? Pepsid is mine too, right? Okay, Pepsid. Brand is Pepsid, generic is Famotidin. Did you hear what I said? Tidin, Tidin, not Dine. okay? Mary, I always say, oh, you know, pronounce it as, as how we um, say it. But for drugs, we don't do eins. We do in. Okay. I'm going to put something in here or I'm going to annotate, which is a repetition of what I said last time. Remember your tidin and tadin. Okay. So I talked about H1 and H2 last time. Oops. Let me put my stylus in. There's really no finishing early for us, huh? <laughs> as much as we wanted to. Okay, let me try. Where's my stylus? Okay, H1 versus H2. Okay, H stands for histamine, right? Okay, histamine. Histamine receptor, H1 versus H2. What did I put on H1? How did I put it? Tony, you remember? Allergies. Very good. That's why I made the one look like, the L look like a one. Okay. This is the culprit for allergies, H1. H2, Tony, though. Uh, acid. Acid. This is a culprit for production of stomach acid. So when the drug is classified as H1 blocker, or H1 antagonists, okay, it blocks the culprit for allergies. You follow? When the drug is called H2 blocker or H2 antagonist, like a villain, it blocks the production, the overproduction of stomach acids. 
So when you say antihistamine, if we're going to talk about that in general term, it can be H1 or H2. But usually when we say antihistamine, that's for allergies. So look. Okay. H2 antagonist, which is acid. You see that? Because pepsid, famotidin, generic, okay, is an antacid. Okay. Famotidin, renitidin. So acid would be tidin. Can you follow? What's the other one for H1? Tony. Uh, the one is tidin and tidin. T I D I N. Very good. So this is tidin. This one is tidin. Sounds the same, right? Okay. Why tidin? An example, loratadin, like your claritin. You see that? Loratadin, des loratadin. Both are antihistamine, but one specific to H1, which is a culprit for allergies, and one specific for H2, which is a culprit for acid. Can you see? Again, this is in your top 200 drugs cheat sheet. Did you guys freeze? Oh, I think they froze. We can hear you, Michelle. Are you guys on? We're all here. Yep, we're here. It looks like everybody's frozen on my end. Okay, as long as you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, because every, every single camera is frozen. Okay, so let me move mine. What else is mine? Why Fenison, right? Heparin. Heparin's mine? Yeah, heparin's mine. Can you hear me? All of you are frozen. Let me stop. Share. I lost everybody. I don't know what's going on. Your computer is just slow, Michelle. I lost all your cameras. Can you at least see me? Because I'm going to go. Yes, I'm going to keep going. You. Yeah, I lost all your cameras. It went black. But anyway, so heparin. Take note, this is very important, okay? The brand or the generic is the same heparin, okay? This, the reason I said this is important because you will see that the unit for heparin is not milligrams, it's in units, okay? It's in units, and I'd like you to see this. So heparin is an anticoagulant. usually given during surgery, okay? And this is a common question on the PTCE, the calculation for heparin, okay? So the vial will have the dosage. Very common question, calculation, simple calculation would be this one, okay? So this vial, as an example, has a thousand units, 1,000 units, for every ml, one ml, a thousand units, one ml. Say for example, the prescription calls for 10,000 units of heparin must be injected. How much do you have to give? How much of this drug heparin do you have to give? 10 uh, milliliters. If it said, there you go. I heard you. If the prescription calls for 10,000 units, now you have to use this entire thing because it said right there, 10 ml. And you follow? Those are common questions on the board exam. This particular heparin, it says on the vial, 1,000 units per ml. If the prescription calls for 10,000 units, then you have to give 10 ml. If the prescription calls for 5,000 units, 
This is dosage calculations, okay? Five. five ml. You will have to inject five ml. Important information. Heparin is never taken by mouth. Why? The stomach acids destroy heparin, so it's injectable only. Okay. Is that clear? I think I'm done. So it's just just that we need to um, stop share. I'll check my email again. Got it. So the first one didn't have an attachment, Jess. The second one has an attachment. So I'm downloading your PowerPoint and I'll share it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then maybe try to figure out later how to adjust your setting. Okay, here we go. I'm opening it right now. I lost all of you. It blacked out. That's why I don't know if you're hearing me. We were all hearing everything clearly. You look fine. Yeah, we can hear maybe, and see you. Oh, maybe on my end, broadband of sorts. Okay, here we go. Jess, your turn. I'll mute myself. Um, okay. So mine was fexofenadine. Um, it is part of the central nervous system. The brand of it would be Allegra. Uh, generic is the fexofenadine. Therapeutic class is antihistamine. Pharmacolo pharmacologic class is antihistamine second generation, um, less sedating. Um, it's used to relieve runny nose, sneezing, itching of nose or throat. Um, itchy or watery eyes due to hay fever or other seasonal allergies. Um, it's also used to treat hives of the skin. Um, DEA would be prescription only or over the counter. It's not a controlled substance. Pregnancy category would be C. Um, tips, um, it's, all, it's advised to take it with only water. Um, do not take it with any fruit juice such as apple, orange, or grapefruit. Um, those juices can make it difficult for your body to absorb the medication. Um, also avoid taking an antacid two hours before or after you take fexofenadine. And it says to consult with your doctor if you have any medical problems, especially kidney disease. And that's all I got. Okay. Sorry, I made you guys wait so long. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. So on the system, it can be confusing. She had here central nervous system. However, you may put it under respiratory because it's another allergy drug, right? Yeah, it's not that too. So it can be confusing. That's why I don't dwell too much on the system. Okay. okay. But since our three systems for this sequence is cardiovascular, respiratory, and gastro, I'd categorize it under respiratory for this particular sequence. Okay. okay. So, and then Allegra, it's very common because it can be over the counter. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I want to mention, um, this is less sedating. That's why other people who's got regular allergies and hives, um, change of weather, um, prefer this for, so that they can function. They're not drowsy because it's less sedating. However, I'd like to take, uh, I'd like to highlight that when, when a drug is prescription or OTC, okay? It's also a marketing strategy. On top of that, okay, as a consumer, as a patient, I'd like you to know this, okay? A friend of mine, just like I do, I have an all year round allergy. A friend of mine, she's also a pharmacist. She lives in Georgia and she has really, really bad allergies on pollen and they have really, really, really high amounts of pollen, especially during change of season, okay? So, she said every year what works for her is different. Like last year, what works for her is Zyrtec, which is cetirizine in the daytime and then at night, Benadryl, okay? OTC versus prescription. I'm making you smart consumers right now, okay? You can just grab it like over the counter, right? And pay a bottle for about eight to $12 for a bottle. But instead, on her annual check wellness exam, she asked the doctor to write a, to write a prescription of cetirizine or Zyrtec for her. Why would she do that when she can just get it over the counter? Because instead of paying $12, 
For a Zyrtec or a Cetirizine, her copay is only $2. Yeah? Am I making you smart consumers, smart patients as well? Yeah. So tell it to your family members. Tell it to your friends. That's the difference. Okay? So yeah. Oh, it's easy to grab it from the shelf, but it's $12. Check with your insurance how much your copay will be. Sometimes it's free. Okay? That's why she asks her doctor to prescribe her Zyrtec whole year, all year round, because it's only $2 copay for her. Now you see, if you don't know these tricks, you'd be spending more. That's why I always say, I'm making you smart consumers. Okay, it's 11.35 on my clock. <laughs> we'll only do 10 minutes break, okay? So come back at 11.45. I'll, what do you want me to do? Shut it down or just close my camera? Close the camera. Close the camera. Close camera. Camera. Close camera. Close camera. 10 minutes. We'll do abbreviation real quick when we come back and then final announcements. Okay? 10 minutes. Set your timer. See you in a bit. Oh, my goodness.